The average age of a member of the United States House of Representatives is 58, according to the Library of Congress. That means the average U.S. representative is a boomer. In other words, someone born following the end of World War II between the years of 1946 and 1964. This graphic from Pew Research shows just how old the 117th Congress skews. The light teal squares are the boomers. The light yellow are Gen X. The gold are millennials. And while there is an increasing amount of millennials in both the House and the Senate, there's still an entire generation missing from Congress. That would be Gen Z. Those born between 1997 and 2012. Now, to be fair, most of that generation isn't even old enough to run from Congress quite yet. You have to be 25 to be a member of the U.S. House. But this 2022 election cycle is the first one where the oldest members of Gen Z would hit that threshold. And one 25-year-old in particular could very well be the very first Gen Z member of the United States House of Representatives. His name is Maxwell Frost. He just won the Democratic primary for Florida's 10th congressional district, which is currently Congresswoman Val Demings' district. Demings, of course, is running against Senator Marco Rubio for his seat. Frost beat out former members of Congress and even a state senator in the district's primary to win the nom. As Politico writes, this Florida Gen Z candidate thinks he can chart a new path for the youth. And Maxwell Frost, a man on the move, joins me now. Maxwell, thank you so much for taking the time. I am very grateful that you've uh, joined the show right now. So, look, you've organized for the ACLU and for March for Our Lives. And here's what you tweeted when you were declared the winner in your primary. We won because of our message, love, that no matter who you are, you deserve health care, a livable wage, and to live free from gun violence. We made history tonight. I got to be honest with you, Maxwell, I got chills when I just read that. Would you say that that's essentially your platform? It really is. And thank you so much for having me on. Our platform is about love. And that's the thing that really made us different from everyone else and what's going to lead us to victory in November. It is a politics of love that no matter who you are, because I love you, I want you to have health care, live free of gun violence, have the right to decide what you do with your own body, protecting the right to an abortion, ensuring that we're bringing down rising costs and the cost of rent. And that's a message that no matter if you're Democrat, Republican, moderate, progressive, you feel that because it's about our humanity. And for me, that needs to be what the future politics is all about. So you have a really impressive list of endorsements from big names to big organizations, from Senators Bernie Sanders Sanders to Elizabeth Warren, all the way to the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Maxwell, how did you get here? I mean, what do you think it is that has made you so successful thus far? Well, I think the primary thing is our message and how unique it is, especially in this moment in time. I mean, let's let's conceptualize what's going on here and in, in, uh, the context. This year has been one of the hardest years for Floridians in terms of our state government and what Ron DeSantis has been doing. He has taken every failure he has from failing to bring down uh, rising rent prices to protecting Floridians from gun violence. And he's blaming every single marginalized community except the work that he's done. And so in light of that, that our message was about hope for a brighter future, and that's really what brought us to win here. But the other thing I'll say was our work ethic. I mean, I've worked campaigns since I was 18 years old, and even in high school was an intern on multiple campaigns, and I knew how much work it'll, it would take. And I quit my job at March for Our Lives to do this full time, spent 60, 70 hours a week for over a year doing this because I knew we couldn't take anything for granted, uh, because I knew as a young person, especially a young black man, um, that this would be a very difficult thing. There'd be a lot of institutional hurdles to get over, and I knew I'd have to work that much harder to make it happen. Talk to me and our viewers more about what Gen Z voters are caring about. My generation, I'm a little bit older than you, maybe a little bit more than just a little bit. I would argue my generation cares a lot about rule of law, right? And how officials are holding themselves out in public office. I mean, our conversations for my generation are driven heavily by, for example, what's happening at Mar-a-Lago, January 6th, et cetera. How do you think, Maxwell, though, Gen Z voters would define democracy. What do you think is really motivating those Gen Z voters to go and vote, in, for example, in the midterms in November? 
Yeah, from what I see and what I believe, it has to do with the way government works for us and the way government is shown working for us. We see, and I, I heard in the previous uh, bit, you were talking about uh, Dark Brandon and everything. Mm -hmm. And we know that in the past few weeks, the polls show that Gen Z and millennials, the youth vote, is the highest base of support for the president right now in the polls, uh, as far as favorabilities are concerned. And that is because he has taken a very aggressive approach to his agenda and to what he wants to see happen. And he's shown Showing people that government can and will work for you. And I think especially young people, when we think about Gen Z and the timeline of our generation, I remember being in elementary school, sitting on the floor, my dad's watching TV and seeing a bunch of people sleeping outside of Wall Street talking about something called wealth inequality, and then growing up and going through more school shooting drills and fire drills. And, you know, I think our generation has grown up wondering, what are these issues? How come they haven't been dealt with? And that's not necessarily to place blame on any one generation, but I think we, we have a stubbornness to us and we want to use that work and we want to be stubborn about building the world we deserve to live in. And when we see our leaders like President Biden, when we see our leaders, people like Val Demings and Charlie Chris, who are going to be kicking out Ron DeSantis and Marco Rubio very soon, when we see them step up to the plate and be aggressive about what the, the world they want to build is, that's really what gets young people excited uh, because we want to live in that world as soon as possible. How do you, as a 25-year-old Gen Zer, how do you plan on having that message resonate with older voters, though, that perhaps don't share the same perspective on the world that you do? And that's why we focus on love in the campaign, because at the end of the day, that message around love, that message around the, the bold agenda, the bold transformational change we need, it's 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 more than generation, right? It transcends generation. It transcends age. And we had a great base of support with older voters. We did very well with older voters. Um, we had volunteers that were, you know, we had a multi-generational, multi-racial movement. And that's why I really wanted to focus on a message that could win over hearts and minds, because as an organizer, I know that that is that's the ball game, right? Ensuring that we're bringing more people into the movement and we're changing people's lives. And I think a message of love is something that you know transcends party, it transcends a race and age, and it talks to our humanity. Maxwell Frost, drive safely. I would like to say before you go, though, as a fellow Floridian, I thank you for making this promise that the future is going to be that much better. I also, as people know, have a seven-year-old daughter. And so the idea that you're laying the foundation through your hard work to make it a better world for her is something for which I am truly grateful. The best of luck to you. Drive safely. And thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Katie. Have a good day. You too.